Uh, super excited to be here. Reason for this webinar is just to give you a flavor on what the future may look like and where the future is going. I, right, and we're going to demonstrate that. I think at a holistic level, right? I think market access is a very, very important function and a foundational function for pharmaceutical companies as well as med device companies, right? I think without market access, there's really no revenue that can be generated. There's a lot of data sitting in the organization, but not enough insights, right? And that is becoming very, very problematic for uh, companies as a whole. So if you if you take a macro look on where we are, the healthcare life sciences industry as a whole is facing unprecedented challenges these days. There's a number of significant headwinds that are happening in the industry. And we expect those headwinds to continue over the next couple of years. Market access group as a whole is at the center of the storm because there's a big PNL line item or the rebate spend and the spending that happens for cost of access that's sitting out there. And executives are starting to pay more and more attention to this and are asking the questions, you know, what would it take for us to optimize the cost of access, right? How do we cut down the spending that we have going on? How do we make our contracting process more efficient? And by the way, in order to do so, you need to make sure that the operating costs are flat or going, going down. Market access function is not one size fits all. You know, there's many, many different stakeholders that support the contracting and market access process, including the brand teams, the market access strategy teams, the field teams, the finance teams, the analytics teams, and the operations team, right? All of these groups have to come together to make sure that you are getting the access that you need and you're getting the access at the right price and making sure that you are able to pull achieve the pull through, right, from those access that you have, have bought. But all of these groups have varied stakeholder needs. They require different information. They are solving different problems. They want to do a different kind of analysis. And the challenge truly becomes, how do you find those incremental opportunities in all these functions and capitalize on them? The core capabilities that you require are accurate and easily available data. Data is sitting out there, but how do you actually make it available to the people who are going to use it? How do you make it easy for them to actually use that data and derive insights? How do you move your operations from a reactive approach to a proactive approach so you're able to essentially monitor what's going on in the organization? And how do you actually create time for it right, by automation? So I think all of these things have to come together holistically for these opportunities to be capitalized in the next couple of, couple of years. So that's where, where a company like Telius comes in. We are an AI-powered analytics platform. We offer augmented analytics, which is just a fancy way of saying we use a, a bunch of AI and intelligent automation, natural language processing, gen AI, a bunch of technologies under the hood to expedite tedious manual analysis and to find those efficiencies and to unlock the an organization's data to be able to drive insights from it quickly. Three main value props I'd say of Telius are one, it's giving that access. It's enabling self-service for all. The second main thing is the ability to accelerate your time to insights rather than uh, spending tons and tons of cycle times trying to identify what is causing your metrics to drop or why is your market share changing. Your analysts, we help supercharge them, right? We, we give them the ability to, to ask that question in natural language, to run those insights and, and get to those second, third, fourth level degree drills on a particular key driver. And then the third thing is democratization and it improves collaboration. When you saw that picture of the many, many groups that have to work together in a unified way to really op optimize and, and, and streamline market access, you do need a, a unified platform like that. So for today, I'll show you how you can create your own reports by just quickly searching on it and creating without, without being dependent on any team and without waiting for weeks to get your answers here i want to know what is the reason why what what is what are the drivers that are contributing to this increase so definitely i can either go in and type my next logical question to investigate on it or i can take the help of the platform where i can run insight auto insight part where it will run the model for me so that's how it will run the analysis and give me the reason like if there's any outlier any insight that i should know of why there was an increase in sales and this is the analysis that we have run. As you can see here, it says uh, what drives change in chargeback amount from April to May. Down here, if you see, it also gives me a deeper analysis where it also compares with other class of trade and where the significant increase has been and what is the percentage of impact by class of trade. And I can see these are the class of trade which has which are contributing the most. If I want to switch a visual, now these are the visual which are being uh, auto-generated by, by 
tell yes. But what if I want to switch the visual? So that is where it helps. Without writing any code, I can just switch between the visual. It also highlights the best fit visualization based on my search. So if you see here, I can just select a pie chart if I want to create a pie chart instead of a bar chart. I can just easily switch between the visuals. So that is where it helps, and I can see that it has automatically calculated the percentage distribution. GPU has the highest percentage di distribution here. So I can again pin this to my report. So feed is something where we can set up those alerts. So these are the outliers and uh, trends that we can get from our data. So if you see here, these are the kind of alerts. We can also drill down and investigate further into it. We can just come in here, select the auto ML or the point and click, and we can run on our data set. It will give us a complete model. We can train it. We can also specify the parameters that we are looking for, and we can create our entire algorithm here. So if you, if I go in here, this is the model that we have created on our Medicaid reimbursement amount, and it has automatically selected the random forest. I have not written any kind of script and I'm not a data scientist, but this really helps me to not only do the search within my data set of those alerts, but also predict how it's going to look like how the future looks like. So if you see in the first visual, this shows the Medicaid reimbursement amount for quarter one of 2023, and we have forecasted how it's going to look like in quarter 2020. So if you see here, it has increased. That is what the prediction forecasting looks like, and it is very important for us to know. Then I did invest. Then I wanted to apply the parameters at the state level and see how at the state level it's going to change. So that is where it is showing us the comparison between uh, the current quarter and the next quarter. So if you see at the state OR uh, Oregon, which where we can see there's a major huge increase in the reimbursement amount. So definitely we have to keep a tap of it and we have to investigate why why the prediction algorithm is in what what are the drivers that's going to be contributing to this. So if you can see, this pad is a combination of all the insights that we have created. It's very similar to the dashboard uh, you must have seen in other tools or reports. So here within Telius, we call it as this pad. It's a collection of all the insights that we can run and we can pin it and share it with our team. It's very easy. I can just click share and select the team that I want to uh, share this report with, give them edit and uh, view access if they want to add anything. So this is how the entire report looks like that we have just created. So how quick it is within, within 15 minutes, we were able to get all our answers create the report, also set up an alert so that if there's any outlier within our data set, we'll be able to, you know, get quick notification on it. So multiple, multiple use cases that you can enable once you open up the data and give you users the power, right, to play around with the data and figure out the answers to the questions that they care about. And that's the reason for which a lot of these companies are starting to implement these augmented analytics tools, because the first piece is there's a significant reduction in OPEX, right? So you have, we probably have like a hundreds and hundreds of reports and dashboards sitting out there. And you can rationalize those and essentially minimize those to a certain set of code reports that you need, right? Otherwise, everything else becomes data, data like available data that people can get answers to. Obviously, users have a greater experience because typically what you have to do is you have to fit the mental model of how you approach questions to the data that is available and the report structure that is available. But now you can essentially slice and dice the data and get answers to questions in the way you like, right? And the way it models your thinking process. And I think generally like there's higher productivity increase. There's a lot of cost savings and the overall analytical productivity increases significantly because once people start playing around with the data and it's easy to do so, they find more and more insights that can incrementally generate it. So very, very powerful concept that we see getting more and more traction across the industry, across multiple areas.